On today's episode, we've got new updates from Tesla in Austin, Texas, new release notes from FSD Beta 10.5, a cold weather range test on the new LFP powered Model 3. We also get an inside look at Elon Musk's management style and the Apple car is in the news again. So let's get going. There are strong signals that the Tesla Gigafactory in Austin, Texas is about to come to life in the next month and Tesla is ramping up their efforts to train and hire new employees in the city. On November 19th, we saw new filings from Tesla to the Architectural Review Board of Austin, Texas. These applications for review identify the five main production facilities of Giga Austin. The body in white, stamping, casting, paint, and general assembly areas. Each filing lists a completion date of December 31st, 2021. From what we can gather, the company just needs this sign off from the architectural review board to confirm that the interior of the factory is safe for employees to begin production, which should be no big deal as this is now, I think the third factory that Tesla has built from scratch. So they know what they're doing. Given that we've already seen equipment debugging and test production at Giga Austin, like the front and rear castings and fully complete Model Ys on site, it's looking pretty good that that first production will be ready to go for January 2022. We're also just learning about a new robotics program sponsored by Tesla at the Austin Community College that will educate future Tesla employees. On November 19th, the college hosted a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Tesla Start Manufacturing Training Facility on the school campus. It's not quite the tits that Elon was musing about on Twitter a few weeks back, but the new college course is set up as a 14 week hands on training program for new Tesla employees to learn the ropes of building robot cars in collaboration with a robotic factory line. The costs of the training facility at ACC, including the specialized training equipment, were covered entirely by Tesla and partially funded through state grant dollars awarded to ACC and Tesla from the Texas Workforce Commission. Students in the program are paid Tesla employees throughout their time at school and following graduation, they are eligible for full-time positions with the company. As version 10.5 of Tesla's full self-driving beta rolls out to testers, we've got a look at the specific release notes for the latest update. In 10.5, Tesla specifically notes that they have improved static world detection for things like lane markings, road edges, cones, and signs on the road. They've also targeted lane change and merging behaviors, specifically improving cut-in detection, enabled behavior to lane change away from merging cars and allowed for more aggressive lane changes in tight situations. Tesla is actually starting to provide some specific metrics in the release notes, like what percentage some features have improved by and how many additional labeled video clips have been added to each neural network. We also see a note that Tesla has added a new emergency collision avoidance maneuvering feature that is going to run in shadow mode with version 10.5. That means that the vehicle won't actually perform this maneuver, but it will be constantly on the lookout for real world situations where it might have to be done. And then Tesla is able to compare the data between what the car wanted to do and what the human driver actually did in this scenario. We know that Tesla already has a collision avoidance algorithm, but it's currently limited to avoid what they consider harsh steering maneuvers. So this new emergency feature is probably exploring what the car might be capable of in the most extreme situations. This still isn't the full stack integration that we're expecting to come with version 11 of FSD beta. So these new lane change improvements wouldn't apply to highway driving yet, but that definitely sounds like the direction that they are moving in right now. But before we get into the next part of the video, 
I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about our amazing and sustainable sponsor, Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving makes their razor products in Canada at an aerospace machine shop that's been in the family for 20 years. The shop makes parts for the International Space Station, Mars Rover, and satellites. So quality standards are of course the highest available. What's unique about Henson Shaving is that they use standard razor blades that are on average 10 cents and recyclable. With 10 cent razors, the average Henson Shaving customer only spends three to $5 per year once they own the razor. The Henson AL13 is free of plastic and made to last decades, making them an affordable and sustainable way to shave. They've been able to do this by designing a blade that only sticks out about 0.0015 inches or 0.038 millimeters. This supports the blade to eliminate chatter and prevent cuts, nicks, and irritation. This is all made possible by their custom head design that perfectly angles the blade at 30 degrees, making it easy to get the precision of a safety razor with the ease of a standard cartridge razor. To get your own Henson shaving razor, click on the link at the top of the description or pinned comment. And if you visit the website now, you can use the code TeslaSpace to get a free 100 pack of razors by adding it to your cart before checkout. You'll be supporting our channel while saving yourself a lot of money and being sustainable. And now let's get back to the video. We've got a real world test of the LFP equipped Tesla Model 3 from Giga Shanghai that should give us a pretty good idea of how the new battery packs will fare in cold weather versus warm weather. The study was completed in Norway by Model 3 owner Bjorn Nyland and compares energy efficiency results from the LFP battery pack that he recorded in the summer against the results he is seeing now that the country has entered near freezing temperatures. Bjorn notes that the only change to the car between the two tests was a switch from all season tires to winter tires, but the size remains the same at 235, 45, and 18. The winter test was done at one degree Celsius or 33 Fahrenheit outside temperature. Bjorn recorded a 29% increased energy consumption over summer performance at a consistent speed of 90 kilometers per hour or about 56 miles per hour. That works out to about 22% less range for winter driving at a cruising speed of 120 kilometers per hour or about 75 miles per hour. He recorded a 20% increase in energy consumption over the summer test, which would be about 16% less range than in summer conditions. So for anyone wondering how a new model three with lithium iron phosphate batteries is going to perform for a mild winter situation, I'd say pretty good, no big deal. Uh, we're still curious though to see how the numbers are affected by harsh winter conditions like what we see here at home. It's not unusual for our city to hit negative 30 degrees Celsius in the depths of winter. It's like one of the coldest major cities on the planet. So that's where I'm still a little bit skeptical of the LFP packs working out. Some of Tesla's internal emails just leaked to CNBC and they give us a really cool insight into what it's actually like to work for Elon Musk. The company's emails are from the first week of October, both written by Elon Musk and directed to all Tesla employees. The first email is in regards to what actions a manager is allowed to take when Elon gives them explicit directions. You can either tell Elon he's wrong, which he admits to being sometimes, you can request further clarification from him, or you can execute the directions. Anyone who doesn't follow one of the three paths is asked to resign immediately. Now, obviously that can come off as Elon being a strict or totalitarian leader, and plenty of folks in the media are using it to paint him like that, but it seems like a pretty reasonable way to run a business if you can get over how blunt the approach is. If you don't agree, you can say why. If you don't understand, you can ask for more information. If you agree and understand, but still don't want to do the work, then you should go home. The second email shows off a bit more of Elon's casual side. 
He says that an associate asked him if it was okay to wear one earbud while working on the floor, and Elon says that sounds fine to him, and he supports music in the factory. He even says it's totally cool to play music through the speakers, as long as everyone in the area can agree on the genre. Then Elon finishes by writing, if there are other things that you think would improve your day, please let me know. I care very much that you look forward to coming to work every day, which is a pretty cool thing for your boss to say. It's definitely interesting to get an idea of how communication really works at Tesla. We saw in the leaked version of their Not A Handbook handbook that everyone is allowed to talk to Elon anytime they want, and this seems to reinforce that open communication concept. I think that most people are just so accustomed to a bunch of fluffy BS communication in corporate culture that it seems weird that people would just speak honestly at work. The long-rumored Apple car is making headlines yet again, and this time we are getting reports that the so far non-existent electric vehicle will be fully self-driving on its release. We know that Project Titan is a real division at Apple that is supposed to be working on an electric vehicle and has been doing something behind the scenes for years now. It was previously managed by a guy named Doug Field, who was Apple's vice president of special projects for three years until September when he left to take a position with Ford Motors. I'll say that again. The dude left Apple to go work at Ford. So take from that what you will. The new person in charge of Project Titan is Kevin Lynch, who was previously the head of software for the Apple Watch. Lynch is supposedly the one pushing to release the Apple car with full autonomy. A Bloomberg report indicates that Apple is internally targeting a launch of its electric car in 2025. They are claiming that Apple's ideal car would be delivered with no steering wheel or pedals. And according to people familiar with the matter, Apple has nearly completed development of their own self-driving chip that could soon make its way into road testing. Now these kind of claims about the Apple car surface every year or so, and they always come from some anonymous source within the company, but we have yet to see any real world development from Project Titan. Which is weird, because we know that Apple has been working on this since at least 2014, maybe even longer, and Lynch is now the fifth executive to take charge of the project. We also know that Apple does have a fleet of 69 Lexus SUVs that they use to test autonomous vehicle hardware right now. But if there is a real Apple car, if any kind of prototype does exist, then they are doing an amazing job of keeping it a secret. And if this latest report does turn out to be true, then Apple would be the only other car maker along with Tesla who would be offering a fully self-driving consumer vehicle. We can't easily discount Apple's artificial intelligence division and hardware development. They should be more than capable of putting out one hell of an electric car if they can get it together. Of course, we know from Tesla that the difference between building a prototype and mass producing an electric car is gigantic. But what do you guys think? Is the Apple car coming soon or just vaporware? For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.